The BYD seal has washed up on UK shores and it's not here just to participate, but to compete. Make no mistake, it's going up against the big boys. Today we are driving the all-wheel drive excellence model bearing two motors which produces 530 brake horsepower. Not only are we going to explore what this car drives and feels like, we're going to see what it has to offer in the way of tech and to see how close we can get to its claimed range. So for that we need a destination. Donna Nook Nature Reserve. It's 160 miles away from where we are in Mayfair, which is where the flagship BYD store is located. So a round trip will equal the claimed range of 323 miles on a combined cycle. And we're going to see if we can complete a couple of tasks along the way. So not only are we going to see if we can partake in some seal spotting, but we're going to try and see if we can get there and return on a single charge. Sounds easy enough. So we've got our fully charged BYD seal, let's hit the road. BYD take pride in being a pioneering company. And if you wanna know more about BYD and what they're about, I'll link the video to the Atto 3 where I discuss all things BYD. However, in this video, we'll be discussing all things BYD seal. It makes up one of three models available here in the UK and is essentially the range top up with prices set around 48,700 pounds. This being the excellence model, it can achieve 62 mile an hour in just 3.8 seconds. It seats five and thanks to 150 kilowatt hour charging capability, it can go from 30 to 80% in as little as 26 minutes. It has an 82.5 kilowatt hour battery on board. Camera zone start ahead. Thank you, which comes with eight year warranty and the car itself comes with a generous six year cover. Now, as impressive as some of that stuff is, one of the things that's a standout feature for me is the design of the BYD inside and out. And it's clear to see it's an area which BYD have spent a lot of time and effort into creating. The interior is a very, very premium place to be. The materials are lovely, the steering wheel, for example, tactile buttons, even along here, the leather is very soft. You really have to go all the way down to where your feet is to be able to feel anything that resembles anything cheap and plasticky. We are learning more and more about BYD and their build quality and how good they really are. Not just in terms of quality, but presentation. I much prefer the instrument cluster in the seal than I did in the Atto 3. I felt that one was a bit too small, whereas in this, its proportions are much more suited for this class of car. If you work in an office environment where you're staring at one or more screens like I used to, you may feel that the interior in the seal is an office away from the office. Now, true as that may be, more and more cars are offering this kind of layout. So I personally have made my peace with it. I would still like to see more physical dials, but this isn't as guilty as Tesla is in this department. What I mean is in the Tesla, you've got the main event, which is the screen in the middle and really not much else. Whereas in this, a lot of thought has gone into the cabin. You've got the storage down here with various different USB slots, this floating space here, with two wireless charge pads, the control here, which I'll go into a little bit more later. The dashboard, it's really well built. There's no creaks and nasty vibrations in here. The door cards, the door handles, everything feels very upmarket. Things that you would expect in a Mercedes or a BMW. To see how this would hold up in the court of public opinion, we took it to a nearby town. We placed this seal in a town centre on a Saturday afternoon and I covered all the BYD badges around the car that I could find to throw people off the scent. Uh, the cunning plan, we've already had someone think it was an Audi, so... Let's see if people recognise what it is or what they think it is. Oh, I love this roof panel. It's amazing. Hello. Hello. Is there someone else in the back here? There's two people in the back here. <laughs> wow. Mm, I don't really know what it is. It's the RS. No, and you usually have them on next year. I've had quite a few Audi's. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what it is? Well, this is the lot that Warren Buffett's bought a load of this company and they're going to eat Tesla for breakfast. It's very, very nice. It is very nice. Oh, wow. It looks like a sort of Tesla looking. Don't drive off in it. It's awesome. Wow. It's 
It's pretty nice inside. Just right here. Oh, yeah, oh wow. I've seen that. I've seen that. That's pretty cool. So from the from the ice of bush. What is it then? Why are we at the market? Oh, the Aston market. Interesting, though. Do you know what it is? No, yeah, I don't see it. This is actually quite a nice car, this is. And that was all the time we had for Guest a Car Bingo. Take from that what you will. This video is sponsored by Stratstone, who are the official launch partners for BYD in the UK. Although they have loaned me this vehicle, I have complete freedom as to what I say or do with the car. They have three sites around the UK, Birmingham, Milton Keynes, and of course Mayfair. If you are interested in finding out more about the models or arranging a test drive, I'll leave their details in the description box down below. Quick update on our road trip. We've just crossed the 100 mile mark and my range has dropped down to 175. So when we got in the car, it was about 300, 302. So we've done 100 miles, but we've lost 125 miles worth of range. And this is essentially what prompted me to do this road test because you have the claimed figures from the manufacturers and then you have what the car tells you. And then there's the actual miles that the car is achieving. Now, if you're new to EVs, batteries behave very differently depending on outside conditions. Since it's January and currently minus one, it has an adverse effect on the battery, therefore your range. So the chances of me actually achieving the claimed range would have been near enough impossible. Spoiler alert. In the summer, warmer climates, it's a different story altogether. However, this is a real world review and cold and United Kingdom go hand in hand, which dovetails nicely to my next point current EVs all suffer the same fate with external conditions. Thanks to the introduction of the heat pump, that's slowly becoming a thing of the past. The heat pump can withstand temperatures from minus 30 degrees all the way up to 60 to keep the battery in optimum condition. Now, I don't know what remote a place you're planning on going with this seal, but you can. And consequently, in this car, when I switch my aircon off with a simple button down here, which I very much approve of, my range only goes up by two miles. And although the heat pump helps reduce the impact the weather has on the battery, I'd still be very interested to see how well the car does in warmer conditions. Now let's talk about some of the alternative cars that you might be considering, most notably Tesla Model 3 and the Hyundai Ioniq 6 or Hyundai. They're all semi egg shaped, super slippery saloons with very similar dimensions, similar battery sizes, therefore similar range between 320 to 350 mile offerings. But we need to also look at the likes of the Mercedes EQE and the BMW i5 because there is a huge step up in price and the equivalent closest thing in terms of power and options to this would be like an EQE premium plus and those are around £87,000 and this is an area where the seal really comes into its own at £48,700 it's best part of £35,000-£40,000 cheaper than the EQE now I might be wrong to compare the cars however having featured the EQE on the channel a number of months ago I'm struggling to think of ways in which the EQE is £40,000 better than the seal the ride might be a gnat's whisker more supple than the seal other than that folding mirrors 360 camera automatic led headlights panoramic glass sunroof even the range the range is there thereabouts with the seal so i'm struggling to find in ways in which it's a forty thousand pound more car and again same story with the bmw if you want a similar spec car you're looking at well into the 90,000s. Speaking of some of the options, at sub 50,000 pounds, you get heads up display, 360 camera, two wireless chargers, a huge panoramic glass sunroof, anti glare rear view mirror, adaptive LED headlights, blind spot assist in the mirrors with electric defrosting, adaptive cruise control, electric boot, keyless go, to name a few. Oh, and of course, can't forget about this little feature. Both variants of the SEAL get a 400 litre boot and a 53 litre frunk and plenty of room for all the passengers. So I think I'm well within my rights to compare it to the best or nothing mob, right? What do you guys think? Fair comparison?
let me know in the comment section. Although it wasn't quite the 160 miles we anticipated, after three hours and 144 miles later, we finally arrived at our first destination. Right, we have arrived at Donanook, which is a nature reserve where you can spot seals here in the UK. However, the peak season to be able to spot the pups and the seals is around November, December. It being early January, the chances of us finding any or taking pictures, videos is slim to further slim still. However, more importantly, I've only got up less than 120 miles of range left in this seal and our journey back home is about 145 miles. So my missus doesn't know that. One person having range anxiety on a road trip is more than enough. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. We're not gonna head back to Mayfair. We're gonna head back home to Hertfordshire. I know that the car's not gonna achieve the range that the manufacturer puts on their brochures. No car gets the MPG that the brochure says. However, we're about 20, 30 miles short of what we need from the car. So we may need to top the charge up a little bit, but for the time being, we're gonna take the little man for a little walk and then I'll catch you guys back in the car. The seal didn't put a foot wrong. However, the weather, the hilly roads, the constant slowing and speeding up when we left the motorway chewed away at the miles. So after a brisk walk, some fresh air, we decided to follow in the footsteps of the seals and head home. I was so committed to getting home on the charge we'd had, so I explored every small option. Right, just entered the postcode. Three hours, 28 minutes, 148 mile journey, and 111 mile range. Inside one of the menus, there's something called range display mode, and it, you can switch it between dynamic and standard. Now, when I flick it to standard, I get an extra 20 odd miles, so I'm at 128 miles. So we're still about 20 miles short, but I'm about to embark on the most boring driving style of my life. Now that I have a few hundred miles under my belt with the BYD seal, I think that puts me in good stead to talk to you a little bit about some of the stuff that I like and some of the things which I don't. First thing is the interior design. I mentioned that earlier in the video and it is a very nice place to be and it's a lovely combination of touchscreen and physical buttons. Every single button on the steering wheel is a physical button and it's incredibly intuitive. On the left hand side I've got all the controls for the intelligent cruise control and on the right I can control the menu up here as well as answer phone calls. But what I really like on this side is that you can even control the air conditioning and it's really really simple. You just press the menu, you flick over to the air conditioning and using the dial you can literally just change it 27, 26, 25. You can adjust the degrees and then if you go one more you can even adjust the speed of the fan watch this you're going to hear the fan speed of the aircon and i'm not going to take my hands off to it already useful and of course you can ask byd to do it as well hi byd adjust temperature to 23 degrees all right the temperature is set to 23 degrees. And unlike the Atto 3, you can get the seal with just black interior trim. There is a lighter color option as well, but in terms of practicality, I much prefer the, the black, the dark leather over the, I think it's like a beigey gray color. The heads up display is really crisp and sharp. It's got a lovely heated steering wheel and the overall refinement, the practicality and ease of use real good stuff. The tech is very thorough too. There are plenty to keep you busy in the way of customization and setup, enough to really give you a bespoke ownership feel. Once everything is set up just how you like, you needn't fiddle with them again if it does get a bit overwhelming. As mentioned before, some of the features include ambient lighting, the brightness, the areas, you can even get it to rhyme with the music. Same with the heads up display, you can adjust the height, the brightness, and even has a snow mode. The navigation has worked perfectly well for our little trip. Tells you where all the nearest charge points are. Tells you how far you can go with the current state of charge. And everything else has been pretty easy to use. It's very responsive, very sharp. With regards to anything that I don't like or wish was different, there's two variants of the seal available in the UK currently. I think it'd be really good to have like an entry level car sub 40,000 pounds and I think that would be incredible value for money for business users benefiting kind tax all the good stuff the standard stuff reversing camera parking sensors aircon 
leave that stuff in here, but just give like a really entry level option. Secondly, I don't know if it's specific to this car, to this particular press car. I don't know if this was once destined for maybe the Australian market, but the indicator stalk is on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So I'm having to unlearn a 20 year old habit because every single car that I've ever driven has always been on the left hand side. Nope. Oh. I'm hoping that the UK market will get its indicator stalked on the left hand side. As the miles piled up, the reality of the situation started to set in. The gingerly approach to driving wasn't cutting it. The miles were tumbling down and I was running out of range. The sat nav was telling me we were only good till about Stevenage and with my partner and baby in the car, I simply couldn't take any chances. So we pulled over for a healthy dinner and well, sadly, I failed this attempt too. With more than 50 miles still to go and less than 25 miles range left, I had to pull over and top up the electricity. Without the charging intervention, the seal was poised to achieve about 265 miles. As it had already been a long day, I didn't bother trying to preserve the energy. With a top up, I was eager to get home. Three and a half hours and the best part of 150 miles later, we arrived home. However, it wasn't all bad news. Although we failed to make it in time to see the seals and although we failed to make it back home on a single charge, to judge the seal on its ability, or in this case, its inability to achieve the claimed range would have been the wrong yardstick in which to measure the success, if you like, of the seal. As it's a characteristic with almost every EV and to a degree even combustion engine cars because they very, very rarely, if not at all, achieve the MPG figures that the manufacturers claim. Now the good news is that this wouldn't have been possible just a few years ago. The range that the cars are able to actually achieve has significantly increased over the last few years and the infrastructure has gotten better as well. Although it's not perfect, it's getting better. Fast chargers weren't as widely available as they are today, but most importantly, the unplanned charging session wasn't a hindrance. We literally just pulled up, so we just charged it while we ate. And it just goes to show that with an EV, you can plan an impromptu trip without having to physically plan the journey. And hand on my heart, I didn't. I said to myself, if we need to charge it, I'll worry about it then. I'll put it on my phone, I'll put it in the sat nav, we'll find the charge point and we'll just charge it. Maybe two years ago, there's no way I would have done that. Based on the style of driving that we'd done, BYD claimed that this should have got about 320 miles. As we established, it was gonna be closer to about 265, which represents a shortfall of about 20%, which to me is acceptable given the parameters. How cold it's been, it never really got warmer than about two degrees. We had two adults in the car, a baby, a car seat, and a buggy with a load of bags. So it was almost at full capacity. The seal weighs just under 2.2 tons. And to be fair, it does really well at trying to disguise all that weight. There is definitely a bias towards luxury. It's much more of a luxury saloon than it is a sportier dynamic saloon. And the acceleration, well, Ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think BYD have just made a good EV. They've built a good car. So what is my final verdict with the BYD seal? Now, it's not revolutionary. It isn't going to wow you if you have driven EV cars before. It suffers the same fate as all EV cars. It does feel like any other EV car in terms of its driving feel and experience, but where I feel the BYD seal really comes into its own is value for money, by today's standards especially. At sub 50,000 pounds, you get all the luxury, all the refinement, all the niceties that, like I said, you would expect in a Mercedes or a BMW. So if BYD continue in this vein, I really don't think it's gonna take very long for the UK market to embrace BYD. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please jot them down in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. See you in the next one.